part four is exactly or asymptotically, how long will it take to test whether a solution form is valid and good with a naive approach? So we're given all these solutions. We're given uh, nm factorial divided by nm minus nw factorial of them. Uh, each of them is valid. In this particular problem, the way we define valid, uh, all of the solutions we're producing are valid, uh, but we don't know that they're good. Uh, so we need to test whether it's good, which means we need to run through all the possible instabilities and check whether those instabilities are going to be trouble. So let's let's just write out our naive algorithm. Okay, uh, we, we'll give it a name if we need to. I think it's going to be so simple that we don't need to give it a name. So for each unmarried pair, because married pairs can't cause an instability, right? They're already married to each other. It doesn't matter if they want to be married even more. That's not going to cause an instability. Uh, for each unmarried pair, uh, check if they meet the definition of instability. That's the core of any algorithm we would make. And the definition of instability requires that we have the unmarried pair and their partners, or in the case of an unpaired man, the fact that that man is unpaired. Uh, with the right data structures, we can probably make that take constant time to find those partners. Uh, and then we can probably make it take constant time uh, to compare the rankings of the two. Uh, and so it should be no problem. So really, the hard part of this is the for each unmarried pair part. Uh, how many unmarried pairs are there? Uh, well, it's the number of uh, possible pairs minus the number of married pairs. Uh, there are NW married pairs, right? Because uh, there should be one married pair for each woman. Each woman is married exactly once. Uh, so how many possible pairs are there? Um, well. There are, uh, let's see, the number of women times the number of men, right? So each uh, woman can be married to each possible man. This is a doubly nested loop, right? For each woman, for each man, they are a possible married couple. We're not producing sets of married couples. We're just producing individual married couples. So how many unmarried pairs are there? There are number of men times number of women minus number of women, which is uh, nm minus one times number of women married pairs. Uh, so this will take nm minus one times nw of these check steps, which should take constant time. Now, will brute force be sufficient for this problem for the domains we're interested in? Well, overall, we've got an asymptotic bound that looks, you know, sort of kind of like nm factorial divided by nm minus nw factorial uh, times, for each of those solutions, we need to do this check up here, uh, nm minus 1 times nw. Now, this is asymptotic, so we could probably just drop that minus 1. We might be able to drop some other things too, uh, but Bottom line, this is potentially really big. In particular, if nw is large, say if nw is equal to nm, this goes to 0. Uh, and 0 factorial is equal to 1. And so the, we get this order nm factorial on the top, uh, which is just as bad as with SMP, which makes sense, because if nw is equal to nm, it is SMP. Um, on the other hand, if nw is really, really large, um, uh, excuse me, if nw is really, really small, uh, let's say we fix nw to be 5 or some other small constant, uh, then in fact this is going to be nm times nm minus 1 times nm minus 2 times nm minus 3 times nm minus 4. Uh, so that'll be nm to the fifth, and maybe another factor of nm thrown in here, nm to the sixth. Uh, that might be too expensive, or maybe it's not. I mean, it's polynomial, right? If nm doesn't get too, too large, uh, that's probably doable. It's not exponential anymore. Uh, but that's only for nw being very, very small. So, okay, if nw is very small, uh, else 
No. Otherwise, it's factorial, uh, which is super exponential. For any exponential, it's really, really bad. <laughs>